Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Lionel Barrymore in Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize one of America's earliest classics, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. You can see Sleepy Hollow today. It's a beauty spot near Tarrytown in the state of New York. Washington Irving loved it, and after his long and distinguished lifetime, he chose to be buried there. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, like so many good legends, is a fine thing to hear on a dark night over a warm fire with the wind howling outside. And among its strongest admirers when it was first published 130 years ago was the great and legendary Sir Walter Scott himself. Close as we are to Halloween tonight, we find it specially appropriate to tell this celebrated story. And to star in it, we are fortunate to have that equally celebrated actor, Lionel Barrymore. And now, a word about Hallmark cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. May we remind you once again that for every occasion important to your friends and loved ones, there are Hallmark cards to carry your thoughts across the miles, across the years, or merely across the way. A Hallmark card says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back says that you cared enough to send the very best. Our star Lionel Barrymore is appearing tonight by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of To Please a Lady, starring Clark Gable, Barbara Stanwyck, and Adolph Manjou. And now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, starring Lionel Barrymore. When the fire burns down to embers on All Saints' Eve, and the cold October moon bears a thin, chill smile at the dark countryside, then the living huddle closer to the fire and listen to tales of witchcraft and goblins and ghosts. Such a tale is told every Halloween by the good Tarrytown people who live close to a sequestered glen known as Sleepy Hollow. I am telling you true, and you'd best pay close heed to what I say. Never venture into Sleepy Hollow after dark. Why not, Uncle John? Why not, Uncle John? <laughs> you can tell he's new in this part of the country. No need for a Tarrytown boy to ask a question like that. Because Sleepy Hollow's haunted. Haunted? Haunted. Haunted by a spirit that rides there. A headless horseman. Rides forth each night at midnight in search of his head. Has anybody ever seen him? Oh, yeah, lots of people have seen him, all right. But none that I know of have ever lived to talk about it. Unless, and I say unless, because there are grave doubts about even that. Unless it was Ichabod Crane. Who was he? Ichabod Crane? Well, he was a school teacher. Came here, oh, must have been over a hundred years ago. He lived with my grandfather here in this very house for quite a spell. Strange sort of fellow. My grandfather said he was the closest thing to a scarecrow he'd ever looked upon. <laughs> it was All Saints' Eve, the first time anyone ever saw Ichabod. They were all sitting around the fire, same as we are tonight, and all of a sudden there was a knock on the door. <laughs> My grandfather got up and walked over to the door. He opened it. And there was Ichabod Crane. Good evening. I'm the new school teacher. I was told I could find lodging here. The new school teacher? Come in, come in quickly, man. We have to keep the door bolted. 
No mortal man is safe on All Saints' Eve. Come over by the fire. You look chilled to the bone. We can certainly give you lodgings. When did you arrive in the village? I just arrived. I rode up through the hollow a little while ago. The hollow? Did you say you rode up through the hollow? Sleepy hollow? I don't know the name of it. It was pointed out to me as the shortest way to the village. What's wrong? The hollow is a haunted region. There's a figure on horseback. A headless figure. He rides at night. I hope he didn't see you. They say, you know, they say that if he sees you on All Saints' Eve and doesn't capture you then, he'll wait. Oh, he'll bide his time carefully. But the day of your death is set from that time on. Be warned, lad. Never venture into Sleepy Hollow at night again. Never venture into Sleepy Hollow at night again. My grandfather warned him. And Ichabod Crane thanked him and said he wouldn't. Ah, uh, if he'd kept his word. But, uh, but I'm getting ahead of my story. Ichabod started teaching the following week. By the end of the week, everyone in the surrounding countryside had met him. After school hours, he'd hunt for books that'd tell him about Sleepy Hollow. And then when he'd read what the books had to say, he went about and talked to people in the village. Yes, sir. Time and time again, I've seen the headless horseman riding by. They say that if he's after you, the only thing to do is to ride like the wind for the churchyard. Once you've crossed the bridge into the churchyard, he vanishes in a puff of brimstone and fire. Oh, I wouldn't want to meet him. And I particularly wouldn't want to meet him if I was you, Ichabod Crane. And so, Ichabod began to absorb the facts and the fancies of the region. Each night, he sat before this fire with the doors and windows bolted. As long as he did that, all remained well with him. But then, one day, Ichabod met a girl, Katrina Van Tassel, the wealthiest girl in the region. Her father's farm was on the top of a hill some distance from Sleepy Hollow, and there Ichabod went every afternoon he could. Katrina, Katrina, Katrina. Your name is like music. Schoolmaster pays very pretty compliments. But I've heard that he pays them everywhere in the village. Katrina, don't play games with me. I must play games with you. If I were you to take you seriously, I, I might laugh. Katrina, I'm in love with you. How can you laugh at a man who says he's in love with you? So many men have said they were in love with me. What they were really in love with was my father's land, my father's house, and my father's money. How you insult me. Perhaps, but I also insult myself. Don't forget that. What must the man have? What must he be to win you? I don't know. Many have wooed me, and none has won me yet. But I'll tell you this, schoolmaster. To me, deeds are far more appealing than words. The man who wins me will not be afraid of the headless horseman or of Sleepy Hollow. That may be me, Katrina. Hello, Brom. Yes, that well may be you. Katrina, if I ride forth at night, will you be waiting? I will be waiting, Ichabod. I am the headless horseman. Katrina, if I ride forth at night, will you be waiting? Yes, Ichabod. I'll be waiting. Then I will be at your door. Come tonight if you will. We're having a party. If you come, you'll have me to reckon with, Ichabod Crane. I'll reckon with you, Brom. You may be bigger. You may be stronger. You may be, as everyone says, the strongest man in the valley. But I'll reckon with you. I have no fear of the living. Good afternoon, Katrina. I will be at your door. Sooner than you think. Ichabod Crane hurried home across the meadows in the shadows of Sleepy Hollow. The words of Katrina kept running through his mind. And now and then, as he hurried on his way, he closed his eyes. And there she'd be. So beautiful that his heart ached from the memory. And so scornful that his face reddened from the memory. And beyond her beauty and her scorn... He could see the dark, threatening shadow of the headless horseman. He was spent with anxiety and fatigue when he opened the door of my grandfather's house. That very door there. 
and closed it and leaned his back again. Uh, 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 I, I'm sorry if I... If I'm late. Why, boy, what's happened? Did you see the horseman? No, he couldn't have. Not at this time of day. The horseman rides only after dark. Yes, only after dark. Well, sit down and get your breath back. Is there any way to, to get to the Van Tassel house except through Sleepy Hollow? No way in the world. Well, then, I'm afraid I shall have to chance meeting the headless horseman. Chance meeting oh, him? Oh, Ichabod. Look out there in the shadows think what it would be to meet him on the road. I know, I know. But I love Katrina more than I fear the headless horseman. I must chance it. I shall go tonight. Tonight! And so it was that that night, after supper, Ichabod Crane attired himself in his best suit of rusty black and walked out through the shadows to the old barn and saddled one of Hans Van Ripper's plow horses. There was a rising wind, and the trees shivered in their bare bones. But Ichabod Crane mounted his steed and started down into Sleepy Hollow. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, starring Lionel Barrymore. If you plan to have at least a part of your Christmas cards personally imprinted with your name this year, and I'm sure many of you do, I hope you'll look for the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. There you'll find the three new Hallmark albums awaiting you this year, each with its own distinctive collection of Christmas greetings. There's the Hallmark Gallery Artist album. Open it at any page, and what a treasury of fine art lies before you. Cards from paintings by the Right Honorable Winston Churchill that seem to have a magic quality of greatness. The same greatness that has made Mr. Churchill belong to all the world in all he undertakes. There's a special Hallmark album for men, a collection especially tailored to a man's taste. And there's the Hallmark Blue Book. Here you'll find a glorious array of cards expressing all the charm and delight of Christmas as you know and love it. Winter seems as enchanting as the sight of falling snow on Christmas Eve. Lovable cherubs, jolly Santas... Cards with spiritual themes conveying the deeper meaning of Christmas. Yes, whatever you desire, whatever your budget, you'll find a Hallmark card that you'll feel was created especially for you. And it will be one that you'll send with special pride, for you know your cards will have the Hallmark on the back. The Hallmark that all will quickly recognize and know you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, starring Lionel Barrymore. <laughs> Yes, when the fire burns down to embers on All Saints' Eve and the wind rises to a thin, melancholy wail, then the living huddle closer to the fire and listen to the yarns of witchcraft and goblins and ghosts. Such a tale is told every Halloween by the good Tarrytown people who live close to a sequestered glen known as Sleepy Hollow. Ichabod rode with short stirrups, which brought his knees nearly up to the pommel of the saddle. His sharp elbows stuck out like, like a grasshopper's, and he carried his whip in his hand like a scepter. A small wool hat rested on the top of his head, and the skirts of his coat fluttered out almost to the horse's tail. As he rode up to the Van Tassel residence, the party was in full progress, and he dismounted and joined the guests. came to the party, Mr. Schoolmaster. Brom, that's no way to talk. Yes? I came to the party, Brom. See here, Mr. Schoolmaster. I intend to marry Katrina. So why don't you go somewhere else and peddle your school books? Brom! I am not interested in your intentions, Brom. Only in Katrina's. Because I hope to marry her myself. <laughs> you! <laughs> she wouldn't look at you for a minute. Oh, yes, I would, too. Look at him for a minute. 
from. You're not welcome here after the way you just spoke. And I'd appreciate it if you'd leave at once. Katrina, are you going to stand for this ridiculous fool? Take a good look at him. Mom, I said I'd appreciate it if you'd leave. And if you don't, I'm going to call my father. Very well, Katrina. If you want me to go, naturally, I will go. I'll settle with you later, schoolmaster. Come on, Ichabod. Let's dance. Right you are, Katrina. Let's dance. It was a wonderful party. My grandfather always said no one in the countryside gave parties like the Van Tassels. Ichabod, Katrina, and the others danced until midnight. And then they sat down by the fire with their refreshments. It was then that the old people of the town began to tell stories of the early days. Oh, it's a brave man that ventures into Sleepy Hollow at night. You know the great tree where Major Andre was taken prisoner? They say that every night he returns and waits, waits for the poor fool who will venture into Sleepy Hollow after midnight. There's a woman in white who haunts the brook at Raven Rock in Sleepy Hollow. She died there in a snowstorm. No one even knows how many years ago she waits by the bridge to stop anyone who tries to pass. But of all the ghosts in Sleepy Hollow, it is the headless horseman that is most dreaded. The headless horseman. Guests all left the party just before two in the morning, and Ichabod lingered alone for a moment on the porch saying good night to Katrina. Good night, Ichabod. I shall remember this evening as long as I live. Good night, Katrina. Thank you for the most wonderful night of my life. You'll come tomorrow. I'll come tomorrow. Good night. Ichabod Crane tossed his spurs to his horse and started down the road. And now he was alone, heading down into the dark fastness of Sleepy Hollow. The stars spread out above him, aloof and impenetrable. There was no sound except the pounding of his horse's feet and the pounding of his heart, which blended together like thunder in his ears. Vaguely, indistinctly, he could hear the occasional melancholy chirp of a cricket or the guttural twang of a bullfrog. The moon shrouded herself in clouds and gave him little light. And now he's at the edge of the forest of Sleepy Hollow. And now he enters. His horse slowed his pace as they entered the hollow. And Ichabod whipped at him as panic leaped into his throat. Ahead in the center of the road stood the tree where Andre had been taken prisoner. As Ichabod approached it, he began to whistle. But the whistle dried in his throat. And he thought he heard an answering whistle come from the tree. Was that something white swinging from the branches? <laughs> in the name of the saints, what was it? Would he pass under the tree alive? The forest seemed alive with voices and spirits. The trees reached out bony fingers for him as he passed. The wind sighed and moaned, and the dead were more alive than the one living man riding through Sleepy Hollow. And now he passed under the tree. Now he was riding on down the road clammy with sweat and fear, gasping convulsively as he rode toward the stream, where legend said the lady in white waited by the bridge. And there was the bridge just ahead. He clattered toward it. Did something move there just ahead in the shadows? He closed his eyes and kicked convulsively at his mount. But as he came to the bridge, his horse stopped with a suddenness that almost sent him flying into the air. <laughs> Ichabod lashed at him, suspended him. And then in the dark shadow of the grove, on the margin of the brook, 
He beheld something. Something huge, misshapen, black, and towering. It seemed gathered up in the gloom like some gigantic monster ready to spring upon the traveler. Ichabod tried to call out, but his parched throat could make no sound. He flailed desperately in his horse. And now, now the object began to move. And with a scramble and a bound, came up into the road toward Ichabod. He appeared to be a horseman of huge dimensions. And on the back of a horse, a powerful frame. And now Ichabod's own horse let out a snort of terror. And he tore across the bridge. And behind him, Ichabod could hear the hoofbeats of the other rider. Across the bridge, up the hill, on the other side, down the hill. As he raced down the road, Ichabod turned to look back. And there, at the top of the hill, gigantic in height, was his follower. And Ichabod saw to his horror that he was headless. And he carried his head before him on the pommel of his saddle. And the schoolmaster and his steed streaked on through the night with the sound of the horse behind him growing closer and closer. Now, with an upsurge of terror, he felt the girths of the saddle give way beneath him and slipping from under him. <laughs> he just had time to save himself by clasping his horse around the neck as the saddle fell to the ground. Now, he jolted about on the high ridge of the horse's back feet of his pursuer grew closer, closer, closer behind him. Then through the opening of the trees he saw the church bridge. He knew once he was across that, he'd be safe. He could hear the dark steed panting and bellowing close behind him. He even fancied he felt his hot breath. Another convulsive kick in the ribs, and his own animal sprang upon the bridge. He thundered over the resounding planks gained the opposite side, and now Ichabod cast a look behind to see if his pursuer would vanish in a flash of fire and brimstone. Just then he saw the goblin rise in his stirrups, saw him raise his head high above his shoulders, and hurl his head at him. Splutch! The missile crashed at Ichabod. He was tumbled headlong into the dust, and the black horse his own animal, and the goblin rider passed by him like a whirlwind. In the morning, my grandfather and my grandmother went hunting for Ichabod Crane. The horse had found his way home without his rider. They walked slowly, looking for any trace of the schoolmaster. They found the trampled saddle, and then they crossed the bridge into the churchyard. Hans, look at these hoof prints. Yes, I see. The devil's own business was afoot last night. Hans, Hans, come quickly. Here's the schoolmaster's hat. His hat? Yes, that is his hat. But what is this on the ground all around the hat? It looks like... Hans, it looks like... It is. That's a shattered pumpkin. But what would a pumpkin be doing here? I don't know. But that's the schoolmaster's hat. And that is a pumpkin. Well, that's all there is to tell about Ichabod Crane. But what happened to him? No one knows. To this day, no one has ever seen Ichabod Crane in these parts. Of course, rumors came back. Someone even claimed to have seen him in another part of the country, teaching school. But of course, <laughs> my grandfather knew better than that. <laughs> my grandfather knew. What would happen to any man who was marked for vengeance by the headless horseman? What happened to Katrina Van Tassel? Oh, she married Brahm a short time later. <laughs> After all, he was the strongest and most powerful man in the countryside, you know. Do you believe all that story, Uncle John? Do you believe Vicobard Crane was really chased by the headless horseman? Well, now, boy, I'm, I'm not saying how much of it I believe. 
grown to be a kind of custom to tell that story in these parts on Halloween. And whether it's true or not, you'll have to make up your old mind. All I am telling you is what you have just heard is the legend of Sleepy Hollow. James Hilton will return in a moment. Tonight I want to tell you about the wide and wonderful variety of Hallmark Christmas cards that you can select in special boxes of assorted designs. For only one dollar, you can buy a box of Christmas cards featuring 12 different paintings by Grandma Moses. So appealing, so heartwarming, you'll want to keep one of each for yourself. Then, too, there's a box of 12 assorted cards especially painted by Norman Rockwell. Colorful cards that capture the very spirit of Christmas that display the same kindliness, gaiety, and warm understanding for which Norman Rockwell has long been famous. Perhaps you'd like a box of old-time prints by Courier and Ives, or verses written especially for Hallmark cards by Edgar Guest. You'll find these in many outstanding boxed collections of Hallmark cards this year, and just because they are Hallmark cards doesn't mean they need be expensive. There are boxes of 12 cards for as little as 50 cents. So look for the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. And then look for the hallmark on the cover of the boxes you select to be sure your cards will have the hallmark on the back. The hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Well, I think we can all agree that the spirit of Halloween is now with us after your splendid performance, Lionel Barrymore. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Mr. Hilton. Thank you. The legend of Sleepy Hollow is one of my favorite stories. Halloween is the most delightful time of the year. Goblins... Witches bobbing for apples and tricks or treats, fearsome masks, pretty costumes, <laughs> a boy dressed as Pinocchio, a girl dressed as Cinderella, laughing pumpkins. Uh, it's a wealth of expression for any artist to capture. And your own reputation as an artist is well known, Mr. Barrymore. Oh, well, I enjoy painting very much, you know. And speaking about amateur painters... I was interested to hear Frank Goss say that Hallmark cards will feature Winston Churchill's work in their Christmas card selection. I shall certainly look forward to seeing them. You know, you fellas ought to be proud of having Churchill on your Hallmark cards. Proud is just exactly what we are. Well, and besides Winston Churchill, there are Grandma Moses, Norman Rockwell, and many others. Hallmark will have its finest selection of Christmas cards. And now, Mr. Hilton, what about next week's show? Next week, our play will be Helen L. Morgan's charming love story about Dolly Madison, entitled Mistress of the White House. And to play the role of Dolly, we are happy to welcome that enchanting young star, Teresa Wright. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. The part of Ichabod tonight was played by Ted Osborne. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Teresa Wright in Helen L. Morgan's The Mistress of the White House. And the week following, Charles Dickens' Great Expectations starring Richard Todd on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS The Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.